Urine culture is performed to diagnose urinary tract infection, identify causative organisms, and to determine susceptibility of the bacteria isolated. However, many women who have symptoms consistent with cystitis do not normally need to have a culture submitted. Only pregnant women and patients who are scheduled for invasive urologic procedures should have urine cultures performed in the absence of symptoms. Common pathogens in the community include E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterococcus, Proteus, and Staph saprophyticus. Hospitalized patients and those with long-term urinary catheters often grow more resistant gram-negative bacilli, such as Pseudomonas, Providentia, and Serratia. A clean voided midstream collection is ideal. This involves cleaning of the periurethral area and maintaining asepsis. A midstream is necessary to reduce the contamination by urogenital flora. Urine from a drainage bag should never be submitted. Dipsticks can be a helpful point of care aid in the diagnosis of infection. The most relevant tests are leukocyte esterase and nitrites, which are produced when gram negative bacilli break down nitrates in the urine. The requisition should contain complete information about the patient, including collection time and method, and clinical presentation. Please indicate if the patient is currently on an antibiotic. This will ensure the lab performs testing to the appropriate extent. Because bacteria can grow quickly in urine left at room temperature, attempt to have urine reach the lab within 30 minutes. If this is not possible, store at 4 degrees Celsius or on ice. In the lab, specimens should be processed as soon as possible. If specimens are received more than two hours after collection, without evidence of refrigeration, results can be very misleading. Cultures are plated with a precisely calibrated loop in order to obtain an accurate colony count. Blood agar and McConkey plates are used as they support the growth of the most common pathogens. The extent of workup can vary among laboratories. Too much workup can lead to wasted resources and unnecessary antibiotics, while too little workup can lead to missed diagnoses. Bacteria should be incubated for 16 to 18 hours and are examined thereafter for growth. Many people phone the lab to ask about cultures submitted in the evening. The results of a negative culture may be available the following day, but identification and susceptibility will need to wait for the afternoon to be reported. Normal flora contamination is most likely if counts are below 10,000 CFU per mil of a given organism or if several species of bacteria are isolated. Such specimens should be repeated. Greater than 100,000 CFU per mil in a symptomatic patient most likely indicates infection. It is worked up if one to two organisms predominate. This threshold is usually referred to as indication of significant bacteria. The lab will often identify and perform susceptibility if 10,000 to 100,000 CFU per mil is identified and if one organism predominates, but not if there are two or more. Interpretation requires clinical correlation in such cases. We will now briefly go through identification and susceptibility for E. coli and Enterococcus. As with all bacteria, identification of E. coli begins under the microscope. Identification is confirmed using biochemical tests for indole and beta-glucuronidase. Automated machines can be used to determine susceptibility to a broad range of systemic antibiotics, including those specific for UTI, such as nitrofurantoin. When Enterococcus is suspected under the microscope, biochemical testing is also carried out, in this case using Escalin Bio. Antibiotic susceptibility can also be carried out manually using Kirby-Bauer testing. Identification and susceptibility results are reported to the clinician to guide further care.